Hi everybody and welcome to the Indro Forge. We're standing today in one of our 3D printing rooms where we have our Mark, Mor Mark Forged Metal X system behind me. Uh, this system uses a little bit of a different 3D printing process than what most folks are used to. There is a lot of direct metal laser sintering out there where you're working with an, an atomized metal powder connecting it together. This uses, uses Mark's Forge uh, fused filament fabrication process which works a lot more like an FDM printer you'd see that most hobbyists would have. The big difference with the machine is going to be that instead of just using a plastic like most FDM machines are, it's using a mixture of metal and a binder that allows it to be extruded the same way but then processed through a wash and sinter. So this is the printer. Above the printer body we have the rolls of our preferred metal for the print that we're doing. We have access to stainless steel 17.4, a range of tool steels, copper and Inconel. In order to remove the support filament that we need to make the print solid, we have a layer of ceramic that will be added between the support and the actual print body. Um, once the prints come out of this machine, we move over to a wash process. What we're doing here is removing as much of the binder as we can so that it's not going to gum up our sinter filters uh, later on in the process. So this is a large vat of a special chemical that's designed to remove that binder. We weigh the part prior to it going in. We set it in for the amount of time recommended from the Mark Forge uh, Iger software. And then once it's gone through that wash and a subsequent dry, we then weigh the part again to confirm it's lost the amount of binder we expect it to lose. At this point in the process, the, the part is similar to a kind of partially dry ceramic. So it is still very soft and malleable compared to the final metal part. One thing that this allows us to do is to make modifications at this stage prior to making it solid metal. So some things that this might include would be surface finishing with uh, some kind of abrasive to get rid of some of the layer lines that you might see in your part. We can also, using our Epilogue Fusion Laser, add in labeling logos or anything like that in the surface that are too fine a texture that, to get out of the printer themselves. Once we've done whatever kind of midpoint processing that we want to do, we'll move over to the center. So the center is a long metal barrel that gives us a, a heated inert gas environment to take the material through a high temperature cycle to bake off the remainder of that binder, solidify the part down, and shrink the part by about 18% so that all of the small atomized metal powder gets fused together as one material. Once that sinter is complete, we then have the opportunity to work with it much like any other metal material. So we can take it out to the rest of our machines to, to weld, to put it into the CNC and get any finer surface or higher quality uh, finishes that we would need on the part. Um, tap holes that we weren't able to get threads on in the original 3D print, get it to the point where we need it to be to be a fully functional finished part. Uh, some of the ways that this machine becomes very useful is when you're dealing with parts that either have a significant amount of material removal that you wouldn't want to have to do in something like a CNC machine. So if you have a thin exterior geometry that is stable enough to go through this process, you can print it with just the limited amount of support material that you need to make it printable without having to remove you know, 90 plus percent of the original kind of chunk of stainless steel that you would have bought and put into your CNC machine. The other thing we can do by going through a process of making sure that we don't need support on interior geometries is make parts that aren't possible in traditional CNC machines. So if we have a largely enclosed structure that we want to have cavities, we want to have pathways, but they aren't accessible from the outside of the machine with something like a drill bit or an end mill or one of the kind of traditional subtractive tools. As long as we've added the geometry to remove the requirement for support, we can center or we can print it with this machine, center it, get it solid, and have that geometry right in the part and not have to go in and kind of recreate it later on. 
So that's a quick summary of the Metal X printer. It's something that we, uh, we always look forward to finding new opportunities to use and something that we've been able to create some really unique parts for our clients. And we look forward to seeing whatever project you might have that might be applicable.